Hey everybody, it's Ron and Debbie, and we are back for another edition of Ask Ron. All right, Ron, our first question is from Corey Wolf from New Jersey. Corey, how are you? All right, he wants to know, what would you do, Ron? Here's the information. The ARV is about 130000 Yep. Monthly payments are 1400 PITI. Ooh, that's high. Okay. Mortgage amount, 139000 Mm, okay. Seller's two payments behind mm. and is e eager to deed me the house. All right, well, Corey, you don't want the deed, I can tell you that. The house is over leveraged and it's got a high payment on it. You do not want the deed. Especially in New Jersey, I think you got some pretty hefty closing costs there, so forget that. This is a pure ax deal. You go sign it up on a lease purchase. And actually, you could, no, I'd say go sign it up on a purchase and sale agreement that you're going to get the deed. And then go find a buyer that you can get that, that will take the deed from you and see if you can't get five grand out of it or so. Maybe even ten. Because when you can when you can sell the property to the buyer, it will motivate them to come up with more money, even if it's a little over leveraged. Payment is reasonable if they're living in it. You're not going to get a monthly spread on it, so that's why you're going to assign it and get out of it. Fourteen hundred is about the top for a hundred and forty thousand dollar house. So it's an ax deal, pure and simple. But I'd use a purchase and sale agreement, not a lease option agreement, since the seller don't care. Okay. All right. Next, we have D.L. Cody is back from Massachusetts. Well, I wouldn't know what to do <laughs> if he wasn't. Okay. D says, when sending yellow letters, what group of homeowners gets you the best return? Pre-foreclosures? Um, D, to tell you the truth, um, I always love to send them to people in foreclosure, but in Florida, they got new rules and I can't take them subject to, so we quit doing that. But yes, uh, I would absolutely send them to people who have been filed on and make it a pure habit of that. I mean, that, that's an ongoing campaign there. And then I always like to send them to out-of-town owners. And honestly, well, I think we better come back to is why you send them to begin with. Because if you're having your VA call all your FISBOs for you, you're going to get more leads than you can handle. I'm not sure why you'd want to send the yellow letters to begin with, unless you want to target some audience like people in foreclosure. If I were you, I'd get that done first and follow up on those leads, and then if you can't get enough, which is unlikely, then, then if you want to send yellow letters, fine. I can tell you at my office, we're not sending yellow letters. The guys can't even handle the leads they're getting, and there's three of them now. now calling these leads, and they still can't keep up with them, and they're strictly generated from, from a v, our VA calling FISBOs. And if you don't have a VA, you guys know what to do. Call our office. We have VAs for you now. They're very well trained on, on calling FISBOs and generating them for you and filling out the form and getting the complete answers. So we are in the VA business. Uh, start there. But uh, I think that answers your question, Dee. Okay. All right, next from Benjamin Hackworth. And Benjamin is from South Carolina. Hey, Benjamin. He's got two questions. All right. One, when doing a lease in which I assign to my buyer, do the buyer and seller come to the closing table to no. fill out the rest of the paperwork? No. We get the, the lease option agreement signed by the seller. And then when we find the tenant buyer that we like, they go in front of the attorney but simultaneously, the attorney must contact my seller and get anything else signed that he wants to, make sure the seller's of sound mind, and, and um, that's when you're going to get the general release signed by the seller and the CYA letter that's signed by the seller that's in my courses. And I've got a killer CYA letter in there, which stands for Cover Your Assets, which protects you against them coming back after you for anything. So um, let the attorney contact the seller, but you don't even need to worry about it until you got a buyer lined up ready to close. Okay, and his second question is, on a lease in yeah. which I assign, do yeah. the seller and the buyer receive the t same table of content contract? Yes. Actually, there's a video right here on this, 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 this week's Go Club Weekly where I went all through that, so make sure you watch that. Uh, we, I went through the contracts to buy and the contracts to sell on lease purchases. Okay, next, uh, Barb from Indiana. She says, Dear Ron, would you please explain how you can show an assignment free fee as credit for a down payment when doing a lease option? Well, you, okay, I will do that. I teach that in my quick start event, but um, you can't. If you're assigning a lease option and your buyer wants to give you ten grand, but they want a credit for the down payment, then you can't assign your lease option. What you do is, and you better get ready for this one, Barbara, now. You'll need a pill for this one, so uh, pay attention <laughs> closely. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just say I lease optioned it from the seller. Okay, I got my lease option agreement in my hand. Now I go find me a buyer, but he wants this credit because he thinks he's going to get a loan within a year. All right? 
I'm uh, ABC Corp has leased it from seller. Now ABC Corp has to sublease it to tenant buyer for $10,000 more than I leased it from the seller. In that lease from ABC Corp to tenant buyer, we will show a $10,000 non-refundable option deposit and a $10,000 higher price. So ABC Corp leases it to tenant buyer. Now, since this is an axe deal and I want out of it, I simply assign the lease from tenant buyer to ABC Corp to my seller. So they can start collecting the rent like we intended to do to begin with, and then I'll get the seller to release the lease option I signed from them to me. Now, wasn't that easy, Barbara? She may uh, have to watch that again. Yeah, go watch that 10, 12, 15 times and that'll, and that'll, that'll come to you. But that's how we do it. Okay. All right. Next from Kyle Cook from Mississippi. Hey, Kyle. I got a contract today on a house, but the lady says it has not gone through probate. She is sending me the will showing her as the owner. Will I be able to buy the house before it goes through probate? Okay. The answer is yes and no. In fact, we're doing one exactly like that. I have a couple of sisters who inherited the house, got to go through probate. So here's what we did. First, you get a contract on it from the sisters to buy it at a really dirt cheap price, of course because you're going to put it through probate. And not only do I want a contract, but I'm going to buy it at a dirt cheap price, but I want a quit claim deed signed by them stating that any interest they have in the property reverts to me. Then I want that held by my attorney so that when we get the probate done, then I don't have to chase them for the deed and they're not going to change their mind on me. Now I'm going to get a new one signed after we get the title cleared up, but I want that quit claim deed in the attorney's possession in the meantime, because I'm going to wind up paying the cost to run this through probate. Now that's not a lot of money, but it's probably going to cost you $1,500 to run that property through probate and take you two, one, two, three, four months. So in the meantime, I want to protect myself. And so we did the same thing. When we get the title cleared up, we owe our seller $10,000 and we'll pay that when we get the title cleared up. We've got 30 days after we get the title cleared up and they cooperate in the probate and sign what the attorney uh, tells them to sign. And in exchange, we're getting the property for about half of its value. I mean, who else would do that? What other investor would even know to do that? So you got that seller all to yourself with no competition. Uh, I hope you got that playlist back over again. Get contract, run through probate, then get them to sign the deed again to your house. Okay. Assuming now nobody comes in and challenges the probate, which is a risk you're going to have to take. Okay, next is Milton Wood from Texas. Hey, Milton. I, hi Ron, I'm in North Dallas and we've been in the business with you for many years. Well, we, sadly got it, we sadly got into one niche, which was getting the deeds on pretty houses and then lease optioning them out to tenants. I say oh. sadly because we didn't become transaction engineers, so are having to learn that now. Okay, now I don't have to tell you, Will, you can't do that in Texas anymore anyway. You can get the deed, but you can't put a lease option tenant buyer in there and get a non-refundable deposit. Right. He says, now that it's not an option, like you just said, okay. uh, we must owner finance the houses we buy. Can we just sell our contract with a seller to owner finance, or should we still get the deed and then deed it over? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. He if said you don't want he to say in the past he's never done that because he was trying to protect yeah. the seller. Well, look, it's just as easy to buy with an all-inclusive trust deed and then sell an all-inclusive trust deed, but... You can still go get a purchase and sale agreement from the seller and then find the buyer and have the seller transfer and assign your contract to the buyer and now the AITD goes from your buyer to your seller if you don't want to stay in the deal. All it is, look at it like a lease option, ax deal except you're using a purchase, I mean a, 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 a owner financing document instead of a lease option document. It works the exact same way. So yeah, you can do that. In some cases, you want to get the deed and stay in it, take the deed. But then you've got to sell it with an AITD, all-inclusive trust deed with owner financing. You can't lease option it, and you already know that. Yeah, you, you got, I'm, i got tons of Texas students. They're kicking butt out there. To be honest with you, I'd rather sell it on an AITD in Texas than I would lease option it most anywhere else because I can get the property back 21 days if I had to forcefully take it back. I can't do that with an eviction. It takes me two months to get them out of there with an eviction. Okay. All right, Ron, our last question today is from Jason McCormick from Alabama. Hey, Jason. Hey, Ron. 
Uh, I have a question about foreclosures, or better yet, pre-foreclosures. Uh -huh. I know that foreclosures differ from state to state, but yep. here I have found houses that were supposed to be sold at auction. They never seem to, and mm -hmm. now are with a trustee. Right. Alabama has a one-year right of redemption. It would seem that at this point they'd be motivated, and it would be better to get these houses before the actual foreclosure because of ROR. Uh -huh. Would it be who... Would it behoove an investor to contact the trustee, or better yet, have his attorney contact the trustee, or am I barking up the wrong tree? You're barking up the wrong tree, and you're wasting your energy, man. And if you're trying to figure out why banks do the things they do, get over it. You ain't never going to figure that one out. Their motivations are totally different than yours, and you might want to ask, well, why do they run it through foreclosure and not even bid at the sale? Because they don't want the house. They're hoping somebody will come there and buy it. So don't even think that you're going to walk in the middle of this mess and have them deal with you. They're not. Trustees probably not going to even want to give you the time of day. So you just sit around, you wait when the bank takes them back, then you can make offers on them. They'll be in the MLS and the realtors will have access to them and then they're fair game. Until then, go work on some deals that'll make you some money. Do the things that we train you to do that'll make you some money and not try to reinvent the wheel and do everything the hard way. You mean like low-hanging fruit? Yeah, like low-hanging fruit. <laughs> like follow the systems that are so easy to follow instead of creating new paths, Daniel Boone. <laughs> okay, right. Ron, that's it for today. All right, guys. See you next week. Better get in that convention. Do you know you're down to, what, a month and five weeks now? Do you know in Vegas, five weeks from now, we're all going to be there doing a convention? Better be there. See you soon.